Okay, so welcome back to part two. We, I need to move this so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're going to be talking about relational data design and modeling. And lots of this should sound familiar to you because you have done it twice in unit two and unit three. What is this image? Looks like an ERD. It's an ERD, yeah. So you're gonna make an ERD with Postgres the same way you're gonna make an ERD with Mongoose. You're just going to open up your favorite editor and put your information down, right? We just wanna, we wanna know how they relate to each other. Um, so we have our data entities. Your data entities are the things you're dealing with, whether they're, I'm trying to think of all the applications that I've seen over these. I just keep going back to restaurants, businesses, swimmers. Those are your data, data entities. And you have your attributes. So if you had a book, for example, the book uh, attribute would be the title or the author or the page count. Um, so let's scroll all the way down here, because again, this is stuff that you've done. We know what the data models are. We know that there are relationships there. Um, let's see. So what we're going to do is imagine that we have, we're making a concert ticket tracking application. We need to track a whole bunch of things like the tickets for the concert and the seats that you're going to be sitting in, how much the ticket cost, who bought the ticket, the customer, when you need to be going, the performer and the venue. Now, if we were creating this in PostgreSQL, you would create a table and we'll start with the ticket model. Let me go over here and make sure I'm looking at the right thing. And in your ticket model, you might have something like seat, price, event date, performer, venue, and customer name. That's cool. That's a, a pretty simple and straightforward way to do it. But this doesn't allow customers to have more than one ticket. And it doesn't have tickets to have more than one performer. It basically doesn't allow anything but just these one-to-one -one relationships that are on this table. So this is where our relationships come in. If we were to take this image from the ERD and put it on a database, or put it on a table rather, this is what it would look like. We have our column with our ID that increases auto uh, automatically. We have our seat column, our price column, event date, performer, and venue. Okay. So what are we doing here? Database, oh, database normalization. I want to talk just a little bit about database normalization. I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to kick it over to David slash Ben, just because they are so familiar with Clippy. But if you want your application to run smoothly without any hiccups, try without any hiccups, you want to normalize your database. And what that is, is you want your data to be consistent through the columns. If you don't, then you're going to have a lot of issues. So, Daven Benvid, um, <laughs> would you like to share your your experience with database normalization as it relates to Clippy? Only if you never say those two words again. Yes. Um. So, with normalization, the reason normalization is important. I just the reason I wanted to Angie to let us talk about this is because we actually ran into an issue and it's the first time that I had to deal with normalization. Usually this is something in the lecture that we just kind of glossed over, but just personal experience. It's really important now because I've actually had to use it for something. Um, when we originally set Clippy up, we had your profiles. You'll notice that Clippy, well, uh, yeah, I guess you wouldn't notice this because you haven't seen the code for it, but it's using a MERN stack. It's using JWT auth. It's exactly the same as your unit three projects, just with more code. Um, the system that we used for being able to sh show all of your names alphabetically on our screens is a sort, essentially. We're asking Mongoose to sort that data for us by your profile name. The problem is that we have it set up such that if the user puts in a lowercase name, Mongoose will say, okay, that is like a lowercase a and an uppercase a are wildly different from one another as far as how they get sorted because of the way that JavaScript works. And what we had to do was kind of refactor things as we went after we saw the issue and insert what's called a normalized field into the um, 
and to the, the schema that we set up for your profiles. So when you sign up for the app, um, let me pull, actually pull this code open real quick. Uh, yeah. Let's see if I can, do I have it handy? No, but I can get it handy. One second here. What happens is when you sign up for the app, um, we reworked the auth function and this is what we're looking at. So if we go to the auth controller, what happens here is when you sign up, right, this is the same kind of thing that you guys saw in your, um, uh, in your applications. We're finding to see if we already have a profile that matches the email address. But then we've got this rec.body.normalize name equals rec.body.preferred name dot to lowercase. So what this does is it takes the profile user's name that they've entered when they're signing up and it will create a normalized name on the database so that when we sort all of our controller functions where we're returning things, we can sort by uh, normalized name so that whenever we get that data back, all of the names that are returned to the front end are in the right order. And because we're sorting by normalized name, a user could enter either uppercase or lowercase for their profile name, but because of this normalized field, it allows us to sort them efficiently as we return that data back. So that even if someone enters an uppercase or lowercase letter for their first name, they'll show up in the right actual order like as far as the user experience goes for our app so that we've got the best UX possible. Does that make sense? It's not something you really think about as being an issue until you come across a problem like that, that JavaScript is fantastic, but like it, you come across silly stuff like alphabetization and it just completely shits the bed. So that's why this is important. David, did you have, or Benvid, did you have anything to add? Not really. Um, another reason the uh, just to even provide like weird edge cases and stuff you have to think about whenever you're like developing applications like this, like you're not only fighting against like the, you know, capitalization of a first, the first letter of a first name or capitalization of first letter of a second name, you have to deal with things like, uh, like the name, like the last name McNeil or something like that, where you have like, the M being capitalized, and then you have lowercase c, and then you have a lower or an uppercase n. So, like that, you know, even whenever you're thinking about like how to build something like normalization and how you would implement something like that, it's really important to consider like names are weird and can be wildly different from one another and can file like fall in these you know very, very different uh regionally, like naming schemes and conventions and you know like just how people are named are different so that you know that really um kind of drives home that idea of like hey if we need to do something with these names we need to kind of take all these weird conventions that exist these weird um names out there that you know we might not think of initially and turn that into something that you know hey our database is able to handle this we're able to you know, handle names like McNeil and, you know, continue on however deeply you want to go into that. But, yep. Cool. Go ahead and share my screen again. So let me back up just a little bit. Um, we had this table here and it has all the information that you might find on a ticket. But like I said, this isn't the best way to do it. You want to be referencing things. If I wanted to, if, let's see, the Microsoft Theater decided to become crypto.com, I don't want to have to go through every single one of these things and type and change them into crypto arena, right? I should be able to just change it in one place. So we can separate these things out. And again, we have done this before. We have our customer model, our ticket model, Concert model, venue model, performer model. We've named, we've put them in separate tables. Now we have to connect them. 
So we have three different types of relationships, basically. There are more that are more complicated, but these are the ones we're going to focus on. We have the one-to-one. -one. So things like one user has one profile. How do we set that up? in a Postgres SQL database. Well, let's say that we had a concert table and it kind of looks like this. It's kind of in the same format as what was in the terminal, I think. So we might have uh, this concert table. It has our ID, it has our title, my concert and the bar fest and the binary rave and our events. Um, and I believe that I, yeah, this, just like this concert. So our one-to-one -one relationship between a concert and a ticket, if we had a ticket table, it might look like this. Where on your ticket table, is that, oh, no, I, I did the wrong one. Sorry, 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 sorry. This one, this is the ticket table. So on our ticket table, we have our ID and our seat number and our price. So how do we relate these two? We need to use an ID. On what table do we put the ID on? Do we put it on the counter table or the ticket table? Who knows? How are we going to connect these? Are we going to put in a concert ID on the ticket table or a ticket ID on the concert table? Ticket ID on the concert table. Okay. So let's see what happens if we do that. And this is what I kind of had before. And I'm just going to, no, let's see. I'm going to make this kind of consistent. So let's say you put a ticket ID on the concert table. That means that for my concert, for the Music Palooza event, I have one ticket and it is ticket ID one, which was the seat right here. How am I going to add more tickets to this concert? Well, with the post sequel, I can't go like this. I can only have one thing in there. Because that would be oh, that would be an array, and we don't we don't only do this. So if we do it this way, you're only putting one ticket per concert. So let's switch where the ID is going. This doc keeps going on the wrong screen. It's driving me nuts. Okay. So now we have put the concert ID on the ticket table. And so for this ticket, it's going to be going to that concert. Let me make this just a little bit bigger so I don't have to keep scrolling up and down. So if I want these two tickets to go to the same concert, I can just by changing the ID. And this is how my concert can have multiple tickets. Any questions on this part? So that's a one-to-one -one relationship. How we would say that in English terms is a concert. And actually, now I'm saying this, this is many-to-many. -many. Oh, geez. One-to-one, user.profile. Pretend this isn't here. Super simple. This are one-to-one. -one. If we want it to be one-to-many, then we can put this in there and we have our one-to-many. So the, the, fun, uh, the fun, oh, gosh. The structure is still the same. You're going to put your ID on the many. So let me back up a little bit because I muffed that up. I don't muffed. I might, might make my own words now. So <laughs> muffed it up. <laughs> so our one-to-one, -one, like I said, your user has one profile. So your profile is what is being owned and that's going to have the ID on it. In a one-to-many, which is this right here, one concert has many tickets. The many thing is going to have the ID on it. You don't want to put the ID on the has one. If you're dealing with a one-to-one, -one, like the user and profile, technically, you could put the ID on either one. It doesn't matter functionally, but best practice, put the ID on the 
thing that is being owned. One to many, it does matter what you're doing. We just saw that if I put the ID on the owner, on the owner model, it's not going to work the way you want it to. So this is kind of similar to what we were doing with Mongoose, MongoDB, how we have our model and then we reference another schema. Uh, we did it with the embedded schemas with our one-to-ones. We did it with uh, one-to-many when we were referencing another schema. The thing, the way the when PostgreSQL is kind of different from Mongoose MongoDB is with the many-to-many. So right here we see how we can use the lines on our ERD. We have our one-to-one -one line, one-to-many line, many-to-many -many line. Um, primary keys or foreign keys. Where's the many to many? I feel like I just skipped all this. Okay, I'm going off script here. Many to many. So in order for many to many to work, look at what we need here with our one to many. We have our concert ID here and we're able to put multiple tickets or we're able to put the ticket number two on concert number two. But what happens if we have a many to many relationship where like, let's say we're dealing with concert and performer. So I'm going to copy and paste this over. So we have our concert and we have our performer. How are we going to keep track of the fact that Buddy Holly could play at I changed these names, barbecue music at the Grillapalooza and the Binary Rave. Or that the Binary Rave could show both Buddy Holly and Billy Holiday on the same night. We can't just use the ID because that's a one-to-many or a one-to-one -one relationship. So with SQL, we have to use something called a join table. And what does that look like? It is a third table that we make and by we, I mean your ORM, because we don't really have to deal with it in SQL. And what it does is it keeps track of the performer ID and the concert ID. So what's happening here? Let's look at this first row. This first row shows the performer ID, which in this case is Billy Holiday. Uh, and then it shows the concert ID, which is my concert. Billy Holiday, which is number two, also shows at barbecue music. So if I wanted to do a query, I would say, hey, SQL, find this join table. Show me everything that has Billy Holiday's ID, which is two. So that would remove that. It would return this information. So now I can show all of her concerts. She has the concert number one and concert number two. I can also keep track of, uh, what's his name? Buddy Holly. And Buddy Holly was performing at Barbecue Music. So I kind of got a little jumble there. Does anyone have any questions as far as this many-to-many -many join table relationship? No, no questions? Are you essentially saying that you have to have a join table for every many-to-many -many relationship that you have in the, in the SQL database? If your yeah. model is going to have a many-to-many, -many, your two models are gonna have a many-to-many -many relationship, the only way to connect them is to have a join table. Third thing. And so this so is what, sorry? So you can't just you can't just have like a single join table for all of your relationships. For all of them? You mean like one to one and one to many? So if I have four many, many to really many to many relationships, if I want to put them all on one join table with multiple rows and rows and columns, can I do that? Could you? I mean. Maybe, maybe if you wanted to go down that dark, dark hole, <laughs> I keep it simple. Your, your join tables really should have two things on them. Now you can add extra attributes here. Like let's say I, I could add another column here on this join table and it could say is booked or is, is confirmed, right? So I could say, okay, well this performer for this concert is performed there is a, they're booked and they're confirmed, they're ready to go. You could do that, but as far as relating multiple models, you really should only do two. Uh, 
Um, so we have that, that. I totally went off script. It went right into the one to one, one to uh, many, many to many. Um, okay, so just as a review, what is the primary key? What's the purpose of that for the PostgreSQL? Yeah, Jessica. To identify a row in the table. To find a row. Okay. And what is the foreign key? What's the purpose of that? To reference another row. To reference another table. model. Right. We see the foreign keys here. We see the foreign keys here. And when I was writing in SQL, we saw how I, I said this ID is going to reference this other table. Let's see all that stuff we already talked about before. So, one second. so if you were putting this in the ERD, I mean, this is all stuff that you, you've done before, right? You would connect these things with these lines. You have your one-to-many relationship because we have a, I don't even know if these things have names, right? Do we have like a plus, a T sign, and then we have a three, three sticks on the other side. So that tells us that it's a one-to-many relationship. We can also have a one-to-many relationship with the customer and the ticket. So one customer can have many tickets. Now, if we look at this, if we connected these models and the concert had, one concert has many tickets and one customer has many tickets, wouldn't it be possible to find out all the concerts that a customer has gone to, right? Because we know the tickets that they have and we know some of those tickets are also connected to concerts. There is a way to do that. It would be a through. So we could say a customer has many concerts through the tickets. And that's how we wanna think about that just internally. We can use the ORM, so Flask or Django or whatever you might be using to say, hey, pull up the customer by ID, show me their concerts through their tickets. So that if, if your data is connected appropriately, you can do that as well. Um, let's see. We created the ERD. Okay, this one went a lot faster just because you guys have already done it. So the main takeaway here, the main takeaway is the many to many. Again, we've already done the one to one. You have your user model, you have your profile model, and you put the ID on the profile model. We reference it that way, right? We have the one to many where you uh, on your schema you say hey here's the id this belongs to so find all of the things with my id on it right and we see it here in the postgres sql here's the here's the tickets right and here's my concert go ahead and find all the tickets that have my concert ID. the main difference is the many to many where you need to use this join table that's the only way that you can keep track of all the different uh, all the different orderings and groups that are possible So what time is it? That went, I, I went like so much slower when I, when I practiced. I guess I just went really, really fast. Um, did any questions? I feel like, I feel like there should be questions. Ask me something. <laughs> no, okay. So that uh, was a, a brief overview of the different relationships as they pertain to Postgres SQL. Your lab is fun. You're uh, gonna find Carmen San Diego. Angie, do you wanna intro the lab? Do I want to intro? No. <laughs> okay. Um, it's all right, I David can do it. Who else wants Excuse to get me. thrown under the bus real quick? Let's let's have a bus throwing party. <clears throat> Your lab today is going to be writing SQL queries. And it is set up that you all know how to get to your labs. We're, we're, we, you can handle that. Make sure that you follow the instructions. If you don't follow the instructions when you set up for this lab, you're going to have a bad time. So there's some seeding that happens once you've cloned the repository that's associated with this lab. So you have to follow the instructions very, very carefully. 
if you type something incorrectly, you're going to mess up your database and you're going to have to start over. So please don't do that. Follow the instructions carefully. If you want to work in groups, work in groups. We'll open breakout rooms. I think all of you found that working in groups is good last unit when doing labs. Uh, if you struggled in a group last unit and felt like you didn't learn anything because everybody else was taking the wheel and you weren't assertive enough, then hop in a room by yourself and learn it by yourself. But this lab is tough, not because it's actually hard, but it's because we haven't really talked a ton about SQL queries. And again, we're getting you into this mode where you're being primed to go look stuff up on your own and actually do the work to go research things. So there are quite a bit of resources that we've given you in the last, or Angie's given you in the past couple of lectures here, and you're going to need to use those resources in addition to the commands that Angie showed you to find Carmen Sandiego. Um, yeah, just follow the instructions. And if you have questions, post them in the engineering channel and we'll go from there. I think we're going to give you, do we have anything else today? Yeah, we have a lesson this afternoon after a lot later. But okay, we'll, cool. We'll give them a lot of time for the lab. Okay, are we going to give them time for the lab before that? Or should, should, did I just shoot myself in the foot by introing a lab before they're going to start working on it? No, it's okay. We, we can, You can intro it. And then when we come back from lunch, uh, the Python introduction is super quick. So, the, sorry, the Flask. So we'll just get that out of the way and then you guys can work on the lab because we'll spend more time in the Flask tomorrow.